A monumental move. The Caps and Wizards poised to pack up and cross the Potomac. The distance is short, but the consequences could not be greater. From the winners. We're looking forward to more games, more like livelihood in the neighborhood. This is monumental. To the apparent losers who are still hoping to land a last minute Hail Mary. It's like a loss, like a loss of a family member. If I share their disappointment in Monumental's decision. The news has many folks wondering, is it really whether you win or lose, or is it where you play the game? So what side of the river or team are you on? Thanks for staying up with us, everybody. I'm Jim Hadley. I'm Sean Yancey. Today's gigantic announcement is still sinking in. The Caps and Wizards are moving to Virginia, and tonight everyone has an opinion. So here are the four things you need to know about this move. Monumental Sports owner Ted Leonsis said the Capitals, the Wizards, and the company's headquarters will relocate to Alexandria, Virginia. Their new home will be at the heart of a $2 billion entertainment district in Potomac Yard. Virginia's governor promises the state will spend zero tax dollars on this project, but D.C. leaders insist they're still in the game and have more to offer Leonsis and his teams. We're working for you tonight with live team coverage. News Force Leon Harris will explain the seismic changes that Monuments Move will bring to Washington and Virginia. But we begin tonight with Jackie Benson. Yeah, she spent the evening speaking with Wizards fans outside Capital One Arena. Jackie, I'm guessing you got an earful tonight. We did. We, we spoke to fans who bought tickets to watch the uh, Wizards play. They watched them lose to the New Orleans Pelicans 142 to 122. And yes, they did have a lot of thoughts about the team moving to Virginia. Stay in D.C. Resignation, sadness, just a couple of the feelings expressed by fans heading into Capital One Arena tonight. I can understand why they did it. I'm a little disappointed. I live 15 minutes away from here. I know a lot of people in the city really love the Wizards, so... It sounds like a very nice facility. I hope the fans still make their way out, but I'm a little bummed. I can't, I got, I can't lie. This fan says traveling to Virginia will be a bridge too far for her. Man, I'm devastated. I really am. I mean, I came down from Baltimore, and being in D.C. is definitely easy, accessible to me, as opposed to going all the way to Virginia. As fans filed in to watch the Wizards take on the New Orleans Pelicans, one man noted stadium deals are often a roller coaster up until the final contract is signed. I'm from Connecticut, and the New England Patriots were supposed to move to Connecticut, and the day before they moved, they changed their mind. So until it's official, it's not official. Now, under the terms of the contract here, uh, the Wizards and the uh, Washington Capitals hockey team must remain here until um, 2027. Monumental Sports Group says 2028 is when they plan the move to Virginia. Back to you. That last man, I lived in Connecticut when New England was talking about moving there for a while. Well, we, we, we will see what happens. There's still still a couple of years. So, I mean, things could change. This is just how they stand right now. All right. Jackie, thanks so much. Meanwhile, Leon Harris joins us now to explain what this means for Northern Virginia, D.C., and everything in between. Leon, I know this potential deal could change D.C. sports as we know it. Yes, pretty much uh, overnight. Uh, this huge deal will certainly affect the fortunes of our two local cities. Today, Governor Glenn Youngkin of Virginia was joined by Alexandria City leaders and Monumental Sports to announce the plan to build a $2 billion sports and entertainment district in Alexandria's Potomac Yard. Youngkin promises this project won't cost taxpayers a dime. And monumental owner Ted Leonsis says that the tentative deal will reshape the fan experience and the community. And we are going to be very, very focused on restaurants, st students and innovators and community spaces and the neighbors. Um, I'm very, very, very focused on being a good neighbor. And Leonza says that he will still be a neighbor downtown. He proposed hosting women's sports at Capital One. He's still owner of that arena and the Mystics as well. Mayor Muriel Bowser says the district is holding out hope that the Wizards and the Capitals will stay put in the district. She admits that their last minute $500 million offer to keep the teams in D.C. is likely too little too late. But she holds out hope that maybe there's still a way. If they come back to us and uh, at, a, at a later time, 
we may be able to talk about something different. Um, but if they want a campus style, it may take a couple of years, but we would have RFK and we would have the FBI. Now, the Virginia plan includes $200 million for transportation improvements to the Alexandria Potomac Yard area. But one thing that does stand out, the Potomac Yard Metro Station will be the only station that handles the crowds. Alexandria's mayor says the city's interest in keeping parking spaces at that site is at a minimum. Because uh, we do not want um, a lot of vehicles accessing uh, this this use. That is not what we want to encourage. This is intended to be a uh, transit uh, arena, a transit operation. Now, this deal still needs approval from the Alexandria City Council, and it needs the Virginia General Assembly to approve the measure and the creation of a new state agency, the Virginia Sports and Entertainment Authority. The General Assembly session starts on January 10th. Sean? All right, we will be watching quote closely. All right, Leon, thank you. You got it. A perceived increase in crime is one of the big reasons that people think Monumental Sports wants to leave the district. Now, we looked at the crime statistics for that neighborhood right around Capital One Arena, and here's what we found. Compared to last year, there has been an increase in some crime in Chinatown. Robberies jumped 51% between 2022 and 2023. Property crime is up 4%, but violent crime is down. Reports of assaults with a weapon were down 25% compared to 2022. And last year, Chinatown recorded two homicides. This year, the neighborhood has one. For sports fans and politicians alike, stadium deals may be easier to make in your heart than in your head. At least that's what some economists are telling our I-team. Investigative reporter Ted Obert, he's been digging into the numbers behind this deal. If this deal comes together, it is a big day for Virginia. This is monumental. And in rolling out the plan for this massive sports and entertainment complex, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin said it was not only good for sports fans, but a financial win for everyone. I pledged that any project like this would first and foremost be good for the Virginia taxpayer. And that's exactly what this project represents. The proposed Virginia deal announced today still has an awful lot of details to negotiate, but here's what we know of the basic outline. Governor Youngkin says this complex will cost $2 billion. A new state entity will issue bonds to pay for it up front. Monumental is putting $403 million in and will pay rent over 40 years. It's not a great use of money. J.C. Bradbury is an economist at Georgia's Kennesaw State University. All the research that has been done ever by economists, regional scientists, urban planners, they tend to find there's little to no economic impact from hosting professional sports teams or building new stadiums. The question isn't whether arenas attract crowds or cash or benefit. Of course they do. The question many economists like Austin Drucker ask is whether the money spent on stadiums would have been better spent on something else. Maybe that $2 billion could have instead be used to make something, you know, improve the roads, improve the schools. So that could have been used for something else. And then the question is, what would, what would that economic benefit have been? The I-team checked into NFL and NBA stadiums currently under construction or completed since 2010. According to published reports, at least 10 of the 16 we reviewed got public money, your dollars. Of those, only five have been entirely financed by private money. Commander's owner Josh Harris has said he plans to use private money to build a new arena for his basketball team in Philly. It's not an option that appears to be on the table today. This diversion of tax dollars, no matter where they come from, is a poor public investment. Now, again, this deal isn't done just yet. We'll be working for you throughout this process, keeping you updated with the information that matters to you. When we're not on the air, of course, get news updates in the NBC Washington app and on NBCWashington.com.